Good morning, good morning. This is the season finale with my good friend Harrison Hall of the Early Birds podcast. And today we're going to dive deep into the success of Harrison Hall, what it's taken to get to that level where he's been at, walking through all the ups and downs. He's had some downs along the way, trying to bring himself back up through that entire journey. So Harrison, how are you this morning? I'm great. I'm that, great. I'm happy to be here. Thank you for for being on the show. You've you've uh, had a lot going on, you know, in in your life over. Oh my God, just the whole shebang. Going to Dallas, back up here, just a lot of, of moving parts. So let me let me ask you a question. Walk me through the journey of first wanting to to head down into Dallas and what it was like, you know, to to come up, schmooze, get to know everybody, and just become that like that man, right? That figure down there. Uh, man, it's yeah, it's it's. It's been crazy to think about. And I was talking to people the other day, you know, how'd you get down to Dallas? Well, you know, the long and short of it was I was chasing a Cowboys cheerleader, uh, <laughs> a, a, a dream, chasing a dream down there, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, it just kind of hit me in the face and uh, chased a, chased a Cowboys cheerleader down there. And it turned into uh, something I never would have expected, you know, especially coming from where I, I look back at, you know, my mind state at 25, which was, uh, you know, very frank, just fresh off a heavy drug addiction you know um and and really kind of a whole new life and um was able to go reinvent myself in a completely new space with with new people and i think i've learned in that time uh, you know I, i've really reflected a lot and, and it's it your tribe the people that you're surrounding yourself with really really um shape who you are you know and so I, I think when i go i think back to where i was in college and then and then you know going through what i went through and then being able to reinvent myself and get down to dallas and just start from nobody knew me they mm -hmm. just saw this long I, I, you know i just grew my hair out at the time so you know i was just this long-haired guy from detroit and i could really be whoever i wanted to be and uh that was a really scary fun cool experience it wasn't actually that scary it was just fun I got the time. It was just fun. I mean, it was just so new, fresh, fun, and and the world was at my fingertips. And um, climbing that social ladder is, you know, something that's it's still crazy for me to look back at. How did I do it? How did I get there? And uh, you know, I I don't I, I don't know. You just don't. You know, you just do stuff. Well, and that's what's crazy. I remember I remember coming down to visit you. You know, for the first time, and um, I remember talking to our mutual friend of ours, Eric Wright, and he's like, "No, Harrison's really connected with so and so." And I'm like, "Listen, I I know people that are connected, like whatever." And then I come down to Dallas, and I'm like, "Oh shit, no, no, no." He's like plugged in, plugged in. Yeah, like yeah, you know, you're yeah. introducing me to everybody. Yeah. Um, to Dallas Stars players, right? You're introducing me to some of the the players on the baseball team. You're introducing me to some MMA fighters that you got really close with, and I'm like. How the hell does this guy, how did he connect <laughs> with all these people? So, so what, what is that like when you're meeting somebody, right? And, and you want to build that relationship and you, and you see somebody out there. How do you tell yourself like, okay, I'm going to get into this circle. How do you do that? I think that's really hard for some people yeah. because what people don't get, like the journey to success, you have to be able to have conversations and, and bring yourself with other tribes. How the hell do you do that? Yeah, I, I, I think. There's an aspect, there's a couple aspects of it, right? There, there's, I, I was a chess player in, uh, in elementary school. You know, I went to chess class. Like I won my chess. I was, uh, what, where, oh, Miller Elementary, uh, yeah. Miller Elementary, second grade. I was a uh, champion of the school. So that's one of my claims to fame. Uh, so I was a chess player. So like there's, there's, there's an aspect of being strategic, right? Where, I want to put myself in this situation for, for this thing. And then there's just the aspect of being open, right? Like just being open to whatever came my way, you know, just being open to, and, and not tethered to a nine to five, not tethered to uh, a specific uh, demographic or a specific group. You know, I, I feel very multicultural myself, right? I'm friends with just about everybody and, and being able to be open to friendships as they come your way, being able to be open to opportunities. And then, Taking that lunch, taking that dinner. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I took. I, I had a. I had. I had a. Shout out United Road. I had a corporate card um, that you know my salary wasn't great there, but I had this really awesome corporate card <laughs> that had a three thousand dollar limit each month, and yeah. they wanted me to spend it. Um, so I took every lunch, made sure to pay for everyone's every every lunch. I took every every dinner that I could go to. Uh, you know, I I just. I, 
it, 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 there was an objective of I want to build something, but I have no clue what it is, mm. and uh, and just being open to whatever God universe gives you, and then and then being strategic about follow up. You know, every every Tuesday I have a list, and this is something I've done recently. Um, but every Tuesday I have a list of people that I want to get closer to uh, that I contact, and that list has grown to about 20, 20 phone calls every single Tuesday. That's part of my weekly routine is just picking up the phone, calling said person, you know, just to create that relationship. Um, and, I, you know, I think there's something to be said about, you know, the, like I said, the combination of being open and then follow up. As a sales guy, you got to follow up. I also think adaptability is, is a big one. Um, I've, I've watched you interact with all different, you know, walks of life. Like you were talking about the multicultural stuff, uh, which you are very good at. How, how do you put your brain in that that area where it's like, okay, sometimes you might not be on the same wavelength as somebody, right? But you know that you have to adapt in order for you to to build that bond and to build that friendship. How, how do you put yourself in that mindset? Uh, I, I, I try to be a chameleon, you know, and I, I try to be, I, and again, I try to be open-minded, you know? So if someone says the earth's flat, I don't say, no, it's not, it's round, blah, blah, blah. I say, okay, well, why do you think it's flat? You know, I, I try to a ask questions. Um, and be open to the answer. Be open to the possibility. Okay, well, you know, let my imagination go. Okay, if the Earth's flat, okay, you're, and you're giving me these answers. I mean, who am I to say that it's not? I, <laughs> I personally haven't been to space and looked at the and looked at the globe, so I don't I don't yeah. know. I mean, those could all be those could all be movies and images. So I think just being open to other people's beliefs, um, just being and it, it, just not. I try not to be judgmental. Man, it's so. It's so easy to be judgmental, and I kind of grew up with things are supposed to be this way, this way. But but my parents were also a little open minded. But but I'm I just I've always been I've just always been open, um, and I think that helps you be a chameleon and, and and get in with different groups because I I you know I have my own set of beliefs, but they're not strict. Like I'm was raised Catholic, right? But like I'm kind of everything, you know. Like I'm open, I, you know. I have pillars that I live by versus strict you have to be friends with these people and this is this is it so 100 percent. yeah I, I think that's spot on i mean t tell me a little bit about the journey from from michigan into dallas i know you were chasing the the cowboys cheerleader yeah, right yeah, yeah, but but yeah. what was it like uh here and then i know you were going over there for for her obviously yeah but what was it like here in michigan kind of what like the mindset you were in i know you were talking about the drugs and kind of heading down that path and then you reinvented yourself going into dallas i mean what what was it about it being here and you just not being able to break that that barrier that you broke in Dallas? Uh, yeah, I think it's it's people's preconceived notions about me, right? Mm -hmm. And and I think that uh, you know I've I actually it was funny I look back uh, I I actually found these old I it, when I was in when I was nineteen I was trying to do modeling, right? And mm -hmm. it was like. You know, my dad, my dad's very alpha. Right. And he's like, <laughs> dude, why do you have so many clothes? You know, my mom and my my brothers are all like, why do you have so many clothes all the time? And, you know, I always felt a little insecure and girly because they would be like, you're such a girl. Why do you have so many clothes? You know, and they did it playfully. But when you're called a girl from the age of se from seventh grade on pretty much, you know, or, or even earlier than that, you start to by your own family, you start to like question it. You know what I mean? And, and, and again, it wasn't it was never meant to harm but but when you're not seen for what you are right and, and so when i when i moved to, i guess where i'm going with this is where I, when i moved to dallas right people were like damn you dress nice like that's that's dope you know that's fly you know like and so i learned that my girly tendencies were actually this thing called fashion which in real estate is actually a really big asset to dress nice you know in sales it's it's a really big asset and so i was finally able to take something i love that i always felt guilty about loving right which was my image and 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 clothes and you know making sure i was look presentable um because on a construction site that doesn't play too well i come from a construction family you know so if i'm not the one getting dirty you know and and, and i'm like oh, don't no these are new shoes <laughs> you know what i mean like uh my dad and family would always be like what's wrong with you but then when i moved to dallas i think i finally was able to just go be who i wanted to be all along but i always felt guilty about it 
um, because I was trying to fit in a box that I necessarily didn't put in. And I'm, I'm just a little, I've always been a little different than the rest of my family. Like, no, you know what I mean? It's well, just, it's, it's also that confidence level too. Cause I, I definitely, you know, going down there and watching you operate to an extent, I mean, you have a very high level of confidence, um, especially in the way you dress. Right. Yeah. I, I, but I think that fashion to your point, it, that's part of who you are, yeah. you know, and that's uh, something you really believe in. And that's something that I've, I've learned the, the older I've gotten where it's like, I don't need people to to like me all the time, right? Yeah. Um, I have a very deep belief system now in myself. Like I know my purpose, I know why I'm here, and I have a goal, and I'm not going to shy away from that goal. And when I talk about confidence with you, I also want to talk about routine. Uh, one of the things, uh, one of the many things, is your ability to to stay in a routine, especially when you were working out, getting on that grind. W- walk me through that grind, because with with this podcast, right, it's all about the consistency, and people are always making excuses, and I want to get people to start dropping those excuses. So for you, with a- as busy as you were getting, um, all the, the different events you had to go to, all the work that you had to do, all the schmoozing that you had to do, all the connections, relationships yeah. you had to do, you still found a way to maintain a, a very high level of accountability for yourself and being able to work out consistently. What did that do for you? We talked about boxing a little bit, but what did the working out do for you? It's funny in, in 2020, uh, you know, when we all got a break from with this whole COVID thing um, was when I really took control of my health. Like and, and, I, and I had worked my way towards e- eating better diets and everything. But really in 2020 is when I really saw I'm going to take control of my health and not and not just going to go to the gym. Right. I'm going to actually try to be good. You know, I'm actually going to try to do that lower ab exercise that I never did. I'm actually going to try to. Um, just just be you know really cognizant of diet and and watching YouTube stuff and so so during 2020 I remember feeling guilty a lot I because I because you know I had friends um you know like my my buddy Eric it just he was out working me like in in aspects of you know work work you mm-hmm. know so I always kind of felt guilty I'm like oh, I'm not working hard enough because I'm I'm spending two hours a day working out but I I just had this. I had this thought that, uh, you know, I read this book and, and it talks about Winston, Winston Churchill and how he basically, you know, you don't realize this, but in Winston Churchill's life for about 10 years, he was kind of retired and feeding ducks and, and going on walks for about 10 years. Um, in, and he didn't know what it was for, but it was in preparation for him to, to go to world, world, world war two. Yeah. World war two. Um, and uh, and be the leader that he was, but he needed ten years of rest so that he was prepared to for his health to to maintain for that. So I, I read that book, and in 2020, I was like, you know, I, right now I feel I just have this feeling that I need to get my health right. You know, I, I need to feel good and 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 get really dive into health. And and now it's it's great because I've gotten my weight down to a a level that is maintainable. I've I've found quick easy techniques that you know I think that's the biggest thing. Quick easy techniques that you can implement every day um, in, in my routine because I was super busy, you know, so no one's got time to, to, to work out to, to, and, and eating is eating is eating healthy with how it's designed right now is a logistics nightmare. Yes. I mean, it, it's a logistics <laughs> yeah. nightmare. You know, I had, I have to think, and I had to, I had to set up and plan my days. I had to plan my weeks, you know? And, and, and so every Monday I would spend, you know, most people Monday they go get to work right right away, and and as a realtor, you know Mondays are kind of uh, off days, and so every Monday I would go get to work, but I go get to work as far as getting my groceries ready, getting my week planned. I spend, I spend really all Monday prepping, and that and that's not and now it, my my system of prep has has turned into, it's really been evolving, right? My my sales program that I'm, I've been working on now for the past year. I know we talked about it in December when I first started. Uh, working on it now it's kind of evolved to I literally go through at the beginning of the week in my notes app and write out exactly what I want my week to look like like vision you know like this is going to close this week this on Tuesday this is what my Tuesday is going to look like and I and I go through and write my own personal story I have a little title and everything you know what what I want the week to look like and just planning ahead you know I think this is the biggest thing and and then and then sticking to your routine and that's the hardest part, you know, sticking to the routine. And, and um, you know, I want to talk about something with you. I think you and I share this trait, and it's not a trait that's easy to share all the time, but uh, I'm, I'm very manic. Um, yeah. I have very high highs, and yeah. I have very low lows. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just part of who I am. I won't go on medication for it. I yep. used to be, yep. and I got myself off of it. And you deal with that, that same, you know, yeah. internal struggle at times. So what I want to talk about is 
that fulfillment piece, right? Where sometimes I don't feel fulfilled yeah. and I feel like sometimes I want so like different things and more. And it's been really hard for me to take my focus and just constantly keep it on, you know, mortgages, for instance, because I do want to do 55 different things at once. Cause I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm that good. Right. And yeah. I feel like I want to challenge myself. What's been that, that struggle for you with finding that focus on, okay, I, I got to stop jumping from this to this, to this. How do you get your brain into that mindset? I, I think as I've gotten more practice, I say older, but I've gotten more practice. I like that. Um, it's still hard, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, I, I being ADD and, and being manic and, and, and just being, being go, go, go. I, I, I found honestly, and this is against all conventional wisdom. And again, I think, I think I had to drop, all conventional wisdom, everything that I was taught as a kid, everything that everyone told me, and just start to really pay attention to my body and myself and understand my own brain because no one has a playbook on my brain better than me. Mm -hmm. I think I'm the leading scientist on myself, <laughs> you know, I like, and if anyone tells me differently, I just respectfully say, you know, I understand you have your training, but, but what if the book you read was wrong, you know, or what if the book doesn't apply to, you know, my particular brain or this particular brain? And I think that having this diagnosis of bipolar or diagnosis of manic or or whatever you want to call it um has really opened my eyes to okay i i do get down and that's okay and okay now i understand right and so um understanding the downs right so a lot of times the downs are just rest periods i'm learning and the downs for me are you can ask my girlfriend are not very fun yeah. you know like uh and then uh, the ups are just the best thing in the world and, and i i think i'm I think when you're on, you're on, you know, but, um, yeah, I, 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 I it, it, you just gotta learn, you, you learn yourself, right. And you learn what techniques work for you. For example, I, and this is where I was going, uh, conven against conventional wisdom. Everyone says you gotta eat, sleep eight hours a day. If I sleep eight hours, I have so much energy that I can't focus on anything. I have to go work out for three hours before I'm even in a position to do that. And I've now learned, and this was something I learned this year doing when I started doing music and some, something I really love where I couldn't sleep. I was so excited to find that I could do music and that I could write and, and, and just really found, I, you know, we t you talk about when you really know you're meant to do something like that's when I discovered I could write music. I was like, bro, this is like what I'm meant to it's do. The expression. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm glad you said it, you know, and, um, for those of you two that don't know, I I, uh, I suffer too with it. I, I'm bipolar, uh, not Jekyll and Hyde, similar to Harrison's. I'm manic, so my highs are really high and my lows are really low, exactly like yours. Yeah. We share that exact same trait. I didn't, I didn't actually know that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I haven't. I don't really okay. share it much with yeah. people. Yeah. Um, but I I was diagnosed a few years back. They put me on medication for it. I did the medication for a year. Yeah. I absolutely hated it because it shut me down completely. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I started weaning off of it. I told my doctor, I said, look, like, I, I can't do this. This is not me. I don't feel comfortable in my own skin anymore. Yeah. I miss my lows. I miss my highs. I said, please, like, I, I just please let me get off of this. And he said, okay. Yeah. So we weaned off of it. And the difference now, to your point, is I am so aware of my lows. Mm -hmm. And I've learned to share it with the people that need to know. There's some people that I don't want to share it with, and that's just personal to me, right? And there's people that I'm, I'm comfortable sharing, and I'm, I know now when my lows are there, you got to stay the hell away from me. Yeah. You don't, you can't let me make decisions. Yeah. You can't let me be around people for too long. Yeah. You got to kind of let me do my thing, and I'm, I'm good at sharing that. When my highs are high, I know to take full advantage of it. Mm -hmm. To your point, yeah, exactly, right? right? Yeah, right? Yeah. It's like Where it's like, yeah. okay, I don't know how long this is going to be here yeah. for, but I know that I can do Let's some incredible, <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah, some yeah. incredible damage. So I do share that with you. I, I know we've never talked about it, yeah. but I have the same one. And it is about being expressive, um, to your point. What allows me to be expressive does help me tremendously where before I was getting shut down by people. You know, they were like, oh, you can't do that. You can't do this. And even to your point with the music piece, I, I know now beforehand, you know, I know that it's something you're passionate about because you haven't stopped pursuing it. So now I know, OK, you know what? This is actually what he wants to do. Yeah. Where before I didn't know. Right. You were jumping around a lot. And for me, it's difficult because. I want it to always be a two-way street, you know, yeah. in, in, in terms of what we're doing. And now I know that. How has that expression allowed you to really come to yourself? Uh, a good friend of mine, Jose, told me the other day, he's like, music is 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 such an a addicting thing because it's it's really learning yourself. Like, for the first time, I, and, I, and I say this, you know, I think when I first discovered music, it's like I discovered this whole other creative side of me that that at seventh grade when I was 
started to dress differently and started to express myself in a different way. I was called a wigger and called, you know, all these things and why are you sagging your pants and all this stuff. And, and I didn't know I was a rapper, you know, I didn't know I was a musician. Right. So I was just a wigger, you know? And so that part of me kind of got frozen in time and in seventh grade and, um, now and so when it when it was finally when i finally had enough confidence and and decided i'm going to do what i want to do after having cancer you know what 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 do i want to do with my life you know and so um i i you know because i could die any day that my cancer could come back any time and, and what 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 do i really want to do with my life and i had no clue it was going to be music i had no idea i just knew i had to take a break and figure it out we talked in december right i, I mean I, I was just i went on a road trip and i figured out i could do music and it and it and it 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 cured every addiction that I've ever had. I, it's it's it, so so you know the sleeping eight hours a day. I think what we were just discussing that I sleep five four. Whenever mm -hmm, I wake up, I wake up. You know, whenever I wake up, I wake up. Now I don't try to drink myself to sleep, or I don't try to pill my way to eight hours of sleep. I don't try to eat mm -hmm. my way to eight hours of sleep. I just wake up when I need to wake up, and then I go take a nap in the middle of the day if if I feel tired or. or or, or, you know, I need, I need a break, right? I'm, I'm learning that side of me. So music has unlocked, uh, has, has all my addictions, all my, all my, you know, and, and this is something that, you know, uh, my porn addiction was horrible. Like I was just like, I was so hated my, I hated my thoughts and I hated doing stuff that I didn't feel fulfilled doing so much that I would just, it would just, I would resort to porn a lot just to distract me for 30 minutes, you know, just like, all right, like, uh, give me a and it's you know what it is, man. And you and I, we've, we've talked about it before. And even for me with, with you, it's, you, it's, it's not that even you're misunderstood. It's like people aren't taking the time to understand who you are. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the difference. And I've, I've fallen victim of that even with you. Right. And I think it has a lot to do with just my focuses and your focuses sometimes go different, but it's crazy because your journey is so intense and yeah. people don't take the time to understand it. And so what happens is they have this preconceived notion of like what you're supposed to be. When you're sitting there, you're like, no, no, no. How do you know what I'm supposed to be? Yeah. I don't even know what I'm supposed to be. Yeah. How can you tell me that I have to fit this, you know, category? And people don't know that you went through cancer, right? People don't know what that battle's like. I, I don't, I never had cancer, right? I don't know what it's like to, to, to have to deal with that, have to wake up with that, and then have people tell me like, oh, you got to do this, you got to do that. And for me, it's like, okay, I happen to fit into the norm of society where with you, it's like, no, no, my passion and my strengths, yes, they're different, okay? But that doesn't mean that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about or that I'm not passionate about what I'm doing. What would you say to people that uh, in the past, over the last year, I would say, that um, have that misunderstanding of you? What would you ask of them if they had a, you know, if maybe there was another chance around the corner where they, they got to reenact with you again, what would you say to them? I love to connect. I love, I, I love to show I love to show you the new me. I, I don't I don't harbor any resentment um, towards anybody. Uh, I I understand, and this is what goes back to the seventh grade self that I was discussing. I, I basically my seventh grade self got stuck in a time capsule. He got re released at thirty two years old, <laughs> and he was kind of an arrogant, uh, uh, immature prick that really had to learn a lot about life and and everything that happened to me. Uh, all was for uh, uh, all was a, a growing process to to kind of break me down into to where I am now, and and, I'll, and that process continues every day. Um, as far as trying to become a better person, a better leader, and 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 you know, I the way I everything that I, I always I've said this a couple of times. The, everything that I was doing in March was I was on the right path. The way I went about it was not was was mm. a bit shameful on, on my on my part i think there was an explosion of get off my back stop mm. telling me what to do i and and no one saw everyone saw the explosion no one saw the fire before that where i had to i and i i did my i no one saw january Fe february march except maybe rami where it was you know where i got so many people on my back telling me and i'm i'm taking everyone's phone calls i'm spending 2 hours a day 3 hours a day 4 hours a day 5 hours a day explaining myself and then i end up getting put in jail by my own family and i say fuck it i'm done explaining myself i'm i i'm just going to now exp i'm going to yell at you and tell you exactly how i feel and it it just it was uh it was just an explosion of just get off me all mm -hmm. like like this is this is something you guys have been doing to me for 
since I was a kid, you know, like trying to put me in a box. I just, I, I love you. I just can't frankly fit in it. And so to anyone, you know, who maybe misunderstood that anyone, you know, who, 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 who saw that as a, as a psychotic episode, it was not psychotic at all. It was just, it was pure anger. And, and I would challenge anybody, I would challenge anyone to go put their heart and soul 401k and their life savings into a project, have it get canceled from you, have everyone call you crazy. And you know, the reason behind the reason it got canceled was pure racism. And that really made you angry. And then you went out and spoke out about it. And then you ended up in jail by your own family on lies that were made up and see how anybody else would react. No, And, and you know what it is, man. It's, it's that struggle yeah. that people don't take the time to understand. And the thing with you now that it's so different, you are so okay with who you are and your demons. And I would challenge people out there too that, that listen are gonna watch this podcast. How comfortable are you sharing your demons with somebody else in a room like this? He shares it with everybody. He's so aware of who he is and he knows his faults. He knows his wrongs. Do you know your wrongs? Do you know your faults? I'll tell you right now, I'm not comfortable sharing all my demons. Mm -hmm. And I think that had a lot to do with your learning and what you had to go through to where this is the version of you now. This mm -hmm. is who you are as a human being. You, you're a great, you're still a good person. You've always treated me well with respect. I can confidently tell you that. You've never been mean, rude to me. You've never been disrespectful to me. You've always been welcoming and open arms. Now you've approached it differently, you know, mm -hmm. at times, but that doesn't mean that you've ever not given me that respect. And I think that's the part that people shy away from is understanding that level of respect. And so we're, we're coming up towards the end here, and, and I want to um, ask you the same question I ask everybody else. Harrison Hall, what is something you would tell your, your younger self, maybe seventh grade self, okay, maybe an 18-year-old self, what's something that you wish you would have told yourself back then um, that you, you would have wished a Harrison Hall of that age would have taken advantage of? Don't be afraid to be different. Don't afraid. Don't be afraid to formulate your own ideas about yourself. Don't be afraid to go take the alternate route when everyone's telling you to take the other route. Uh, don't find your tribe and... Listen to yourself, your internal self, which is a collection of all the wonderful humans that have helped shape you. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, those humans that help shape you are not you. They don't know what's inside of you. And they're here to give their perspective on what they, you know, they're to give their perspective on what they want for you and they want the best interest for you but maybe you want something different that they'd never thought of you know i think that that that's what i would want to tell myself and that's that's a, that's deep man um i think it's stuff people don't think about and look uh this is this is the end of the the early birds podcast and i i want to talk to some people just really quickly struggle is real and you need to have people around you that understand that struggle. Uh, this is a this is a good human being here in front of me, and he's been very good to me, and he's very very good to a lot of people around me, including Rami, who's at the at the helm here. I would tell you guys this before you cast your own judgments. Look in your own backyard. I would tell you to make sure that your demons are are absolutely zero before you try to cast judgment upon somebody else, because you never understand or know somebody's struggle. But I promise you, if you really dig deep down and you really try to get to understand somebody, all they want to do is to be understood and to paint a vision and to do something great. And they just need you along the way sometimes. So Harrison, I appreciate the hell out of you for doing this for us. You look good. You look clean. You look and, smooth. And damn, y'all, I'm just, I want to be a rock star. This shit's supposed to be fun. Let's have fun now. Now that we know I'm not crazy, I want to have some crazy ass fun because that's yeah. what I'm known for. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate you having me on. Um. I'm trying to have some fun. When the sunglasses go on, it gets to be H Rock mode. We get to have a little. We get to have a little extra fun. Well, so. I appreciate you, man. Yeah. Well, H Rock is out, and John Haddad is out. This is the Early Birds Podcast, Episode Eight. Cheers. Tune into next season. Take care, Harrison. Thank Cheers. you so much, sir.